we're entering into uh, First Thessalonians chapter one, establishing prayer, word, and witness. Before that, now we're going to sing a song together, and uh, this will be our theme song. <clears throat> Because in this book there, in First Thessalonians. Every chapter ends up with the coming of Jesus Christ, and uh, you might not be familiar with this. This is by Ron Hamilton. Christ is coming; he is coming, and we do not know the hour. Oh, sinner, you're not ready. Till you taste His saving palm, Lord Jesus, come quickly and take thy children home. Are you ready for this coming when Jesus claim His own? Sing together with me, right? As he went up into heaven, so he come up from the sky. Oh, Christian, will you serve him for redemption? The worth nine, Lord Jesus, come quickly and take thy children. Home, are you ready for this coming when Jesus claims His own? He will come in power and glory, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we who still are living shall be caught up. In the sky, Lord Jesus, come quickly and take thy children home. Are you ready for this coming when Jesus claim His own? Amen. And so we, reading verse one. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, unto the <coughs> church of the Thessalonian, who is in God and <coughs> the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord <coughs> Jesus Christ. So we have a team there uh, <coughs> that uh, went on the. Uh, Second missionary journey, and if you <coughs> look uh, to the uh, uh, left side of it, <coughs> uh, you can see uh, Macedonia, <coughs> and then you see uh, Thessalonica. And right now, of course, you know some of you may remember uh, with the fighting going on uh, in the <coughs> in the, uh, Russia and Ukraine. The Black Sea is right there on the right hand side. And uh, we, what we see there as Asia is actually Turkey. So actually, Turkey controls the uh, ship going into the Black Sea. And uh, but Macedonia is in is now in uh, Greece, but Thessalonica is right there. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Paul went to Philippi. He was in prison, then chased out, and then he went to Berea and went to Thessalonica. He was there only three short weekends, but in those three short weekends, a church was established, and this church was in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace was needed, God's favor was needed, and <clears throat> peace was needed because they were going through a lot of suffering. So let's look at the next slide there. So we have the place Thessalonica. Is the uh, <coughs> capital, the province capital of uh, Macedonia, in link Rome with the east. 
So it's quite a strategic place, very, very rich place. The messenger, Paul, Silas, Timothy, teamwork. Paul and Silas were together and they were in prison in Philippi together. Then Timothy uh, came in, joined in. Messages is uh, encouragement during what we call persecution time. Because Paul only had three weekends with them. And after that, he was chased out of uh, Thessalonica. There were death, people were dying, and they were wondering what's happening. And they were conduct, they were leader. Because uh, uh, <clears throat> some of the people were practicing what we call uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, what we call sexual immorality, and so we will be going through some of these things in chapter one. We're going to talk about establishing uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, establishing prayer and uh, the word, and then witness. And then we go on to the next one has to do with community, family, the church, one for all and, and all for one. Then the third chapter will work on this matter of growing in faith and growing in love. And then uh, <clears throat> chapter four, we're, talk, we're going to talk about separation, conduct, and sanctification. And then the last uh, uh, session, we're going to talk about loving the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. We'll be talking about rapture. We're we'll talking about the day of the Lord that is found in First Thessalonians. It was written to people in the community, the church. All right. Uh, okay. Belong in the community. Save people, and they were serving people. The word should actually will be slaving people. They were slaves to God, but also slaves to the people. And there were people that were suffering. So we talk about even those Christians in Ukraine suffering away. And uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we don't have much some of this, but uh, so we need to prepare ourselves uh, for the days ahead of us. And then there is not only just uh, love and faith, but the next slide tells us of the hope. So the hope is Christ's second coming. So every one of these chapters ends up with the second coming of Jesus. Uh, the first chapter, removal from the wrath to come, the great tribulation. In second chapter, there's a reward for soul winners. And then chapter three talks about the reason why we need to live a separate and sanctified life. And four, has to do the rapture of the church that uh, gave us how we need to comfort one another as we think of those that have gone before us. And then chapter 5, the reassurance of salvation. So every one of this has to do with love and hope. And uh, <clears throat> so this is a great, tremendous book uh, that uh, has got uh, work into our lives. Now, let's continue reading the scriptures. Paul says, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayer. We give thanks to God, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and of our Father. Remembering without ceasing, then knowing, brother and beloved, your election of God. Because our gospel came not unto you in word, but also in power. Not just word, not just uh, messages, not just information, but in power. And in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you <coughs> for, the sake, for your sake. So number one now has to do with uh, uh, <clears throat> hearing the word of God, but above all from a praying preacher and a praying team. So he said, we, in this matter of prayer meeting, so three of them getting together, always praying for them and uh, making mention of them. All right, 
not long intercessory prayer, but making mention of them. And so we need to pray for our church uh, <clears throat> all the time. Giving thanks. The word there means remembering without ceasing. It's a, it's a kind of a, uh, habit. First of all, give thanks is in present tense. So we are giving thanks. And we are remembering. Remembering has to do with the uh, <coughs> habit. is adjectival. It means that there was his uh, uh, nature, his second nature. Praying, remembering, uh, <coughs> mentoring them. All right? Continually. Never skipping a day. So how we ought to be praying. Praying for our loved ones. Praying for ourselves. Praying for the church. And uh, I pray for my children, grandchildren, every morning uh, when I get up and every night before I go to bed, always mentioning them. Amen? So we all do, okay? Praying preacher and a team. Prayer is the breath of faith. A breath of what? Faith. And now look at that. Prayer meetings are the what? Lungs of the church. All right? All right. People say, ah, so what? It's only a prayer meeting. My friends, prayer meetings are the lungs of the church. We must make much about prayer meetings. Uh, some people think that prayer is preparation for ministry. No, prayer is ministry itself. Prayer is the main thing. Prayer brings God into our lives. So how we ought to put prayer as number one. We will look at the scripture next. We find that there were people <clears throat> that did prayer for protection. For example, we have Hezekiah pray and ask for help. That's found in Isaiah 37 verse 21. So you might want to remember that. And as uh, Hezekiah prayed, and he says, uh, save us, O Lord, because the, uh, <clears throat> the, the Assyrian king, was uh, circling around uh, Jerusalem, just like uh, the Russian uh, circling around all those towns. So in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, the peace of God, shalom, will keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Hezekiah prayed, and God then answered his prayer. And so Isaiah said to him, because you have prayed to the Lord, and the angel of the Lord <clears throat> took away the enemy. And so we're praying that God will protect, especially the Christians some of, in some of these cities with the missiles and the strike that we're going on right now. Next, we see our Savior himself. What we're trying to look at now is this matter of establishing prayer in our life, in our church, in one another. There was prayer protection, and uh, so we have this there. Okay, next now. Uh, next one is, uh, next slide. Jesus' example. Go ahead. Now, <clears throat> Jesus, rising up early. So prayer to him was more important than rest. So he rose up early and more <clears throat> important than sleep. Because sometimes he spent all night in prayer. Prayer more important than working on miracles. He was telling Peter, he says, Satan will see you as wheat. But I pray for you. Instead of working on miracles in Peter's life, he said, I pray for you. That's why prayer is so important. Sometimes, you know, we're too quick to give an uh, uh, answer or too quick to fix people. But we need to pray. And I, God, you know, I have uh, the social media, WhatsApp. We have people asking for prayer. When I ask for prayer, I stop there at the very moment and pray for them. And then I do my best to mention them before the Lord. And even more than teaching and healing. And when he, uh, <clears throat> after he was teaching and healing, he withdrew himself and went to a desert place and prayed. And the prayer was more important than money or just machinery in securing workers. 
the Lord said, harvest is plenteous, labors are few. He said, hey, we need more money, you know, <clears throat> we need more organization. We need more uh, program. No, no, no. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of harvest will uh, <clears throat> send forth laborers. So, Jesus' example. And so we look at Jesus' ministry, for example. Next, his example, but then we see how he prayed. Next slide. On earth, we find that he prayed with tears. The scripture talks about it in Hebrews 5, 6, 7. Strong crying and tears. When was the last time we uh, prayed with tears? And we sweat and blood. Luke twenty two forty four, the scripture said our Savior prayed, sweating with blood, interceding for you and for me and for the whole world. And then he has his everlasting uh, ministry. He's living today. He uh, died for us, buried, rose up from the dead, and is a right hand uh, <clears throat> with the Father of authority and power, and He's making intercession for us before God the Father. And He's given us the gift, the gift that is the Holy Spirit Himself, the Holy Spirit Himself making intercession for us and praying in and through us. So that we are not only called to prayer, praying without ceasing, but the power behind us, the person behind us, the Spirit of God in and through us will be praying in and through us. Now let's look at some great intercessors. Some great intercessors. Remember Abraham prayed over the evil cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, Genesis 18. Please read it yourself and go through it. And how he could, uh, what we call, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, kind of uh, bargain with God, more or less. He said, if there were 50 people there that are believers, please don't destroy it. Then he said, how about if there were 40? Or they were 20? How about there were 30? How about 20? How about if there were only just 10 people? Don't destroy it. So he kind of... Uh, you know, uh, bargaining with God. And how we need to weep over our city, weep over our country. Moses over the rebellious people. The people rebel against God, and God says, Moses, stay aside, I'm going to destroy them. And Moses said, no, don't do that. If you do that, oh Lord, blot my name out of the book of living. Take, me, take my life. So that was how he prayed. Uh, asking God to take away his life. Then Paul, over his own countrymen that rejected the, uh, Jesus Christ, with heaviness of heart, he said, oh, that God, that I will be a curse, but I'm praying for my own countrymen. Pray for your own <clears throat> country people. And uh, even be prepared to die for them. God's house must be called a house of prayer. And yet in our churches today, even in our homes, it ought to be the house of prayer. We make it a den of thieves. We compare, we contrast, we fight, we strive, we compete, uh, we, uh, <coughs> we uh, have dissension and so on. We are stealing from God and stealing from God's glory and stealing from one another. And so Isaiah 59, 16 reminds us, a call for what we call intercessors will be needed. We need people that will stand in the gap between God and men, staying there. Bible reminds us they that the uh, uh, soul with tears shall rejoice, <coughs> shall reap with joy, and even with tears. And then let's look at the <coughs> desire as we look at how... Uh, we can look at some items or some uh, attitude of our life. Next slide. Uh, <clears throat> the purpose is not to uh, get a uh, hold of answers. The purpose is to get hold of God. Rehearsing God's will. Picturing God's desire. Then learning to listen to God. Then anticipating God's answer. Praising and worshipping God. So we pray. 
we thank God, we rejoice that God has heard our prayer, and then we worship Him. All right, that should be our prayer desires, ending always with worship. So scripture reminds us, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning our life. So let's go ahead now, establishing prayer and how <clears throat> it is so important for us to learn the importance of prayer, the benefits, and the joy of praying. Next. <clears throat> prayer part, power. There is power in prayer. Not only we get hold of God, but there is power in prayer. First of all, what does prayer do? It's revealing. It, it's, uh, it's what we call examining our life. If we regard iniquity in our hearts, God will not hear us. So when uh, uh, Isaiah prayed, he cried out, Woe unto me, Lord, I am undone. Yes, I live among wicked people, sinful people. But Lord, I am a man of unclean lips. So when we pray, God examine us and we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And when we humble ourselves, God give grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. That is a strengthening time. And when we pray in time of suffering, Jesus was strengthened and the angels came by and strengthened him. Then in Nehemiah 9, is a separating time. There were fasting. There were healing. There were dedication. <clears throat> it is also staying power, strengthening power where the Apostle Paul, he prayed three times, and God says, my grace is sufficient for you. All right, then when you're weak, I'm strong. All right, so that God's power may be upon our life. There's a mission. Powerful service. When they prayed, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They spoke the word with bonus. It's an overcoming time. Watch and pray. Lest you enter into temptation. It's convicting. They were pricking their heart. Fear came even unto unbelievers. Why? Because the people got down and prayed. A praying church, the Holy Spirit convict even unbelievers. They were pricking their heart. Then prayer is what we call have saving power. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, shall be saved. So when you call upon the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus promised to save us from our sin, save us from the, the power of sin in our life, the penalty of sin, and then the presence of sin as we die to ourselves and live unto God. Now here's some pra practical project that you might want to think of. Let my people pray. Use a social media. Use a WhatsApp. I mean, use a phone and put prayer items down and so on. Pray, for example, 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. nightly. Two things. Just make mention. Lord, build my church. Build this church. And Lord, save soul. Don't have to go to long, long prayer. But make mention of a church. Make mention of souls that need to be saved. And maybe you ought to pray together, second or fourth Friday, whatever, and so on. The scripture reminds us, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we need, you know, some people say, no, prayer very boring. My friends, there is so much to pray about, so many people to pray about. The uh, guys in the church, um, in the big family of God, then those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, not just the sick, you know, and the infirm, and those who need care and so on, but those that are without Jesus Christ. Then more to that now, there's some practical uh, project you need to have. Prayer chain, all right, <clears throat> around the clock. Not just only for Ibn Jesse, now this time in Ukraine, 
we ought to have prayer chains around the clock, all night prayer times, taking uh, <clears throat> the time to spend one night uh, in a week or one night in a month having an all night prayer time, gathering uh, in the homes, in the church. Then there's season of prayer and fasting. There are prayer concerts that you need to have where everything that is there has to do with the singing and the worship, the preaching and the prayer. Then prayer retreats where you get sick together and say, let us just have this retreat for prayer together. Home prayer meetings. Then prayer room and tower. Men ought always to pray, not offend. We know of uh, uh, friends that built what we call uh, prayer towers. Just a place. And the churches, they have prayer rooms where they're set apart, where people go in there for prayer. And there are uh, items for prayer laid out. And then there are periods of prayer where each person will take an hour of prayer and so on. So, and then uh, every day H now, next, let's learn to do what we call prayer or blessing. Prayer or blessing. So to bless one another. All right. <clears throat> the, Lord, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Or the king's men, uh, uh, redeemer's prayer. The Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. And number 6, 24, 26 is an ironic prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee, be gracious upon thee. The Lord lift out his countenance unto thee and give thee peace. Or even Paul writing the first Thessalonians. And we can pray this. And the God of peace sanctify you, separate you. Set you apart wholly. And I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Simple mention as, you know, just bless people instead of gossiping about people, instead of uh, saying uh, <coughs> bad things about people. Bless them in the name of the Lord. And now we go forward now. And see what Paul continues to say now. He said, uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> next uh, slide, my brother. As uh, <clears throat> the uh, preacher begins to assure them of their salvation. Uh, he says, knowing, knowing, beloved brother, <clears throat> knowing your election of God. It's a confidence that Paul had on them. Election, beloved brother. Love and chosen. They were elected by God. They were chosen before the foundation of the world according to the good pleasure of God's will. The evidence of the salvation, we have three things. There were evidence in their life. There was the work of faith. Faith being faith, my friend, the nature of faith will always produce works because faith without works is dead. So these people have faith. is shown in the works of love and care. Then there was labor of love. This word labor, you know, it's not just, you know, by convenience you come and serve God. This has to do with what we call uh, uh, an idea of strenuous labor. Hard work, sweat producing labor of love. So these people were are showing their love. How? By strenuously caring and sacrificially giving and blessing people's lives in practical way. And that's a patient of hope. These are three virtues that Paul began to uh, expand more and more as we go along. Patient of hope. The word patient has to do with long endurance, long suffering. And their hope, the expectation is ground for inner strength. And it is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is for service and it is for triumph. The victory will be there. Success is doing what God wants us to do in Jesus Christ with hope. And now we go on to look at Paul's preaching now. It's not only perceptive, he could see that they were saved, evidence of their salvation, 
evidence in those what we call ingredients of their faith and love and hope. And now it talks about his preaching. His preaching is not just in word, but in power. Not just straight and pers pers persuasive. The word power has to do with changing lives. Many times we are just giving information. But Paul's preaching, Paul's words were the living voice of God. It gives life, able to change life. All right, we talk about eloquence. Paul talks about, he says, I were not eloquent. Versus what we call spirit empowerment. It was a preaching in the Holy Spirit. All right, the Spirit of God using the Word of God into life with much assurance. And so here's Paul's practice. Paul says, listen, my life has shown it. Okay, my life has shown it. Uh, <clears throat> called a bear witness, all right, an example. Uh, I've set you an example to be uh, to be followed, and you uh, witness of that, because it was not just in word, but in power, in the Holy Spirit, and in much what we call assurance. The Holy Spirit convicting, converting, comforting, conducting us to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. And now see the response of the people. And you became, next slide. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word of God in much affliction and with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you were examples to all them that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. So Paul says, you were followers of us because we set an example. You follow us and you also follow us with Jesus Christ because you want to be like Jesus Christ. That's what we mean by making disciples, making them like Jesus Christ. And they have received the word of God in much affliction. Watch it. Even in adversity, they receive the word of God. And so the scripture reminds us in Philippians 1.29, we're not only just believe in him, but we are also called to suffer for Jesus' sake and with joy in the Holy Spirit. That is a spiritual joy. And we praise God for that. And we see some pictures of this Ukrainian Christian. While they were going through those afflictions, they were worshiping together in church and they were singing praises unto God because that is Spiritual joy, it comes from the Holy Spirit. All right? And so they, you, so that you were an example to all them that believe. So they became now examples. Why? Because non-believers need example. The Paul and Silas and Timothy were examples. They became followers of uh, Paul. And then now they became example. And so that other people uh, will, uh, <coughs> will uh, uh, follow them. So it's not just a matter of what we call the preaching of the word, but the changed lives. The changed lives. All right, next. Yeah, you would, do you see what the word uh, followers mean? The, follow, the word followers mean the making. Making. All right? Making somebody. All right? To, uh, to imitate somebody, mimic somebody. And so Paul says again, brother, be followers together me. Now mark those that are bad examples. All right? That's personal discipleship. Okay? Modeling. Modeling. In our lives, as parents, as men, women, husband, wives, uh, leaders, and so on, modeling and then mentoring people, okay? And so that is so important. So Paul was not shy to say that. You know, we were example to you, you were example, and so on. And because he knew he, who he was following, okay? But if other people follow us, how would they be led? So that's what we need to think about, okay? So, and he knew where <clears throat> they were going. Next now. 
we find that uh, <clears throat> they found the Lord. By following Paul, they heed the word of God. They found the Lord. The key, having received the word. That's a, that's a key. All right. <clears throat> so they received the word into their heart. But with much affliction. And the word affliction is an interesting word. It means actually severe uh, kind of affliction. It means like grapes. All right. Grapes that have been pressed in a wine press so that out of it will come out what we call wine. So are we broken body and pour out wine for the Lord? And sometimes one of the privileges we have with this matter of uh, affliction and uh, the benefit is that God is what we call squeezing out what we call the juice, the fragrance, the grapes, your life and my life, so that out of that will flow the sweet-smelling fragrance of Jesus Christ in and through our life. So we joy in the Holy Spirit, the inward peace, not resign kind of a fatalism, you know, but uh, <clears throat> even as Paul and Silas, while they were in prison in Philippi, they were singing away, singing away, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. So one thought we need to ask ourselves, is it easier to believe today than in Paul's days? What do you think? Sometimes we grumble and complain with a little trouble here and there. Uh, did we really go through uh, great uh, affliction and pressure like grapes in the wine press? And then knowing what it is, the joy we have with the Holy Spirit. Now, because they have received the word. Now, now we're going to look at establishing the word in our life. Next, the word in our life. <clears throat> Next, the blessedness, the blessed of the word. The Bible tells us, blessed is the man that walketh not in this, the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of a scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law that he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in the season, his leaf also shall not wither, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The word, now we establish the word in our life. Next, we see the blessedness that is in there. The blessedness, the word, the word is in plural. Blessed is a man, fullness of blessing. Oh, how completely happy is a man, even the poor, the forgotten, the obscure, but he can be blessed. He finds joys with him. It's a psalm, one is a psalm of what we call congratulation. There's a blessing of peace, being a, have peace with God through Jesus Christ. It's a blessing of purpose when we uh, fear God and keep his commandments and uh, of wisdom, of great peace and uh, uh, <clears throat> with no offense or usefulness where we watch and pray and reap and then of eternity, he that uh, doeth his will shall abide forever. Again, let's look at uh, how we are blessed. By whom are we blessed? When we establish God's word in our heart, in our life. Next slide. But intrinsically blessed. Why? Because when we know and we do what God wants us to do, we are blessed. So intrinsically, we are blessed inside us in the judgment of men and even among non-Christians. They will magnify us. All right? And Jesus declared to be so. Blessed are those that thirst and hunger after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those <coughs> that are poor, for this is the kingdom of God. Jesus declared us to be so. At the last judgment, the king will confirm it, right? And when we can share, as we've done it to the least of the brother, uh, we have uh, done it unto the Lord. And then when God bless, he will be forever. First Chronicles 17, 27, the blessing of the Lord 
it shall be forever. Next, so why we got to establish it? And so, uh, blessed, but <coughs> blessed is a man, but his delight. Okay, the strong adversity, adversity means he doesn't just enter in a vacuum. All right, he doesn't walk, he doesn't stand and sit with all those evil people and so on. But his delight, what is his joy? And then we look into the script. Uh, there were times the psalmist talk about, you know, how they were weary and tired. But God is our strength. God is our strong tower. Then when circumstances seem to be very bad, Joseph said this now, you people many for evil, but God made it unto good. To bring to pass, to save much people alive. So God introduces himself in the picture. And when we heed God's word, when we uh, meditate on God's word, then there will be blessing. What are the blessings that we want to think about? Okay, let's go ahead and next slide. And the delight comes, the joy and the rejoicing. His delight is in the word of the Lord and in his word that he meditate day and night. We're not under the law. That's a curse. The word is a rule of life so that we can do it. And the word that dwell richly in our hearts, we receive it. Not just uh, uh, <clears throat> the good, but God's law. And so we shall magnify God's word above all thy name. And Psalm 119.32 is a very interesting verse. He said, I will run the way of your commandment. I receive it, practice it, run. Because you know why? You will enlarge my heart. Ah, God will enlarge our heart when we obey and do that which he has for us. So the delight is in the law of the Lord. The total revelation. Next slide. And what does the word of God give us? The word of God gives us peace. So you can look at the scriptures. Give us faith. Give us joy. Give us understanding. Give us wisdom. Give us life. And then give us success. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have to establish the word of God in our life, establish the word of God in our church and in our family. Next, the word now, meditate. All right, meditate day and night. Groaning, a kind of a intense yearning. The verb talks about habit of life. And the idea has to do with chewing the, chewing the cut. It's like a cow going down to the meadow. And then he chew, uh, he chew the grass. And, and you hear uh, the cow chomp, chomp, chomp on the grass. He puts it into one of his stomach. Okay? Then he goes under the tree. He vomit the, <clears throat> the grass that he had chewed. And then he bring it out to his mouth. Then he start chewing it, chewing it, chewing it. That is chewing the cut. That is what we call meditating. So we read God's word, we memorize God's word, and then we take it out into our life, we chew on it, and then it goes right into our system. All right? The <clears throat> grass sustain, goes up, it sustains our whole life. It's not for entertainment, my friend. It's for practical use. Happy see, they know, but do it. Night and day, that's a continuous process. So Joshua was told. He said, you meditate it day and night, you observe it. It will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Success has a meaning of doing this with hope in God himself. All right, knowing that God will bless that which He has put into our hearts and our life and enable us to be fruitful by the grace of God. Next, we see now meditate day and night. Next, so we're talking about the benefit of the Word of God and why we need to establish it. We then <clears throat> memorize, personalize it, and then <clears throat> we harmonize it. Put it in poetry or put it in song. 
as well, when we sang the song earlier, it, uh, it has some scriptural verses in there, which we can see there. And when we meditate, we enter into the presence of God. We saturate our mind. Lord, renew our mind with the word of God. And then instead of putting a, a, what we call filth in our mind, uh, <clears throat> you know, the word uh, giggle is used, garbage in, garbage out, uh, the computer uh, language, garbage in, garbage out. Sometimes we're garbage in, garbage out. But we need to have Tito, treasure in, treasure out. Set your mind with the word of God. Then pondering, pondering it through self-reflection, reflecting every situation. Take time to reflect with the word of God. Talking with God with his thoughts. All right? <clears throat> Those are his words. For example, God says that in Psalm uh, <clears throat> 90, that uh, uh, re- uh, <clears throat> 91, that remind us, you know, that if we love the Lord, God will protect us and preserve us. He will send his angels to uh, guard over us, to keep us in our way. All right? They will hold us uh, <clears throat> with their hands, lest we dash our foot against a stone, and we reflect it. We talk to God with his thought. Then we yield in obedience to his will. Lord, not my will, but thine will be done all the time. Every morning you get up, and you say to the Lord, thank you for the day, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Next, uh, we have the next slide. So we have now the benefit. What does it do? What does the word of God do? We have talked a little earlier, but it gives us life. Generative. The word of God reminds us just now, we are born again by the what? Spirit of God. <clears throat> we think of Charles Spurgeon, for example. He was going uh, through a very hard time. And uh, it was snowing. He went to a church, a very small church. It was snowing and the pastor, uh, uh, the guy who was supposed to preach, the pastor was not there. And one deacon got up and he read Isaiah 45, 22. Look unto me and you shall be saved. That just that verse. And God saved Charles Spurgeon. And then later on, use him as a prince of preacher. I remember how God made use of Matthew eleven twenty eight in my life. Come unto me, all ye that labor <coughs> and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that night, by God's grace, I came to Jesus Christ, and He gave us, He gave me rest, and His revealing mirror. So that when we read God's word, we can see ourselves. We see God, yes, but we see ourselves. And we ask God to cleanse us because the word of God is also washing, clean us up. And it's also guiding. It's a lamb, a light. It's also enriching and adorning when we have God's word. It seems that we are actually wearing beautiful garments. Gold is nourishing. It's milk. And then it is... Uh, bread to us and is to meet us we are strong but it's also warring we go forth with the sword of the holy spirit when the devil try to tempt us we use god's word and say it is written man cannot live by bread alone but by every uh, word that comes from the mouth of god thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god and Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and Him only shall thou serve. So we use the sword of the Spirit of God in our battle against the evil one and against <coughs> principalities and power. And so next now, we need to preach the word. Yes, we meditate. We need to preach the word of God. So this is a problem that we have today. We talk a lot about, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, all ways people try to do but there's no substitute for the preaching, the foolishness of preaching, and the preaching of the Word of God. Second Timothy 4 to preach the Word. Uh, be in season, in season, out season, reprove, rebuke, exalt, with long suffering and doctrine. Here, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for <coughs> reproof, for correction. For instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished 
unto all good works. We need to remember every word, and as we use God's word in our life, it's life giving because it is God's breath into our life. And then when we preach God's word, yes, we can have what we call illustration. But there's no substitute, you know, for the word of God. All right? And when it's given, that's why we read the scripture. Uh, we find that certain incidents in the Bible are repeated again and again. For example, we have uh, uh, <clears throat> in the Old Testament, the, uh, the reputation of the Passover and so on and so forth. And, and, and why is it that we have the baptism of the Lord's Supper? Because it tells us of the uh, death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right. Again and again, scriptures. All right. Now, Four things to be reminded of. First of all, uh, profitable for doctrine. Doctrine is defining right. And number two, reprove, rebuking wrong. And then can you put C in front of D there? Because it next will be correction, restoring right. And then D there, instruction, nurturing right. You know, we live in days where people talk about love, 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 care, share, whatever and so on. They forgot. The whole scripture has to do with, uh, with defining right doctrine. But it also has to do with rebuking wrong. You know why? Because we are sinful people, even as Christians. We need the rebuke. We need the reproof. All right? And then we need the correction so that right can be restored. Then we need to be nurtured, cared for, that right with accountability, with responsibility and accountability, then we will be nurtured right. As a result then, we will be mature. The word perfect has to do with maturity. We will be furnished, meaning well-equipped, well-trained, and now we can do good works. So let's look at some things that we need to look at. All right, quickly uh, through this now. Some vital question to ask that people ask. What do people have to know in order to grow? They need to know the Word of God. What perspective do we need to have? They need to have the mind of God in all this, looking it from God's point of view. What conviction they need to have? They need to have the heart of God. What skills do they need to have life for ministry? They need to do all this to the glory of God, whatever skill we have, but we need to do it to the glory of God. What character? We need to have the character of God. Next, now we find the success of this, what we call blessed man. This is what God promises. We'll be like a tree, evergreen and fruitful. All right? A tree in contrast with shaft. Shaft has to do with, you know, our, our wheat. <clears throat> we, what we call, we, we, we know, we know wheat. Uh, we put the rice or the wheat up in the air, the wind will blow the, sh the shell away, the shaft away, and uh, a wheat seed will drop to the ground. So a life tree will be evergreen and fruitful in contrast, will not be blown away. Blessing us for what he is. Will flourish like what we call a palm tree. Next, then we are as a tree planted. All right. Tranter or transplanted. The scripture reminds us that actually God plants us. Our life ought to be planted and sometimes it's transplanted into another area, another ministry, all right, <clears throat> and different seasons of life. Then we are planted by God. When God plants, nobody can pull out. But those that God doesn't plant, you know, be pulled out. Put out, cultivated and secure trees of righteousness, intended for what? Fruit. Intended for good works. Now there are some disconnecting times for growth and more fruitfulness. This uh, it should be John fifteen verse three, because there's sometimes God prune us. Okay, take us out. You know, if you want to transplant uh, a plant. You take it out from a, 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 <clears throat> a place, 
then you don't plant the person straight away. We let the, th the roots there dry a little bit, a couple of days. Then we take it out and put it into another place. And sometimes there are disconnecting times, pruning times, a very discomforting time, where it seems that God is taking us from one place to another. It seems to be a dry time, a desert time, and yet there will be growth. Yet there will be more fruitfulness. And sometimes we'll prune all those uh, uh, twigs and leaves are useless because they're not fruitful. God cuts them all away so that we will be more fruitful. Okay, next now. He tells us the success again. God plants us or transplants us by rivers of water, streams of irrigation. All right? You have a patch area. And then God uses like streams of water to irrigate the area. So God uses to influence people, to bless people's life. We are wells of water. Well of water springing up to everlasting life. Jesus uh, uh, puts his water, living water in us. Then in and out of us come out his, uh, what we call living waters when we are rooted in Jesus Christ. So look at some fruits. Next, quickly go through some fruits now. Fruits, the product of three. They are in First Peter 1 there, 5 to 8, virtues. But fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, and peace, patience, gentleness, and goodness, faith, <clears throat> Uh, uh, then uh, meekness and temperance, then the peaceable fruit of what we call righteousness, and then fruits of holiness being set apart, and wonderfully, fruits of soul being saved. And God began to use you, filled with the Spirit of God and His attributes, with right living, right words, right behavior, set apart for God. And then what happened? Ah, there were fruits of soul being saved. People will come and trust and believe Jesus Christ because they see the example in you and I. All right, next, the success. Okay, it is fruit in the season. Now there are time of growth process. It's a progress, there's a process. Fruit according to time. There's a season, my friend, and some seasons are dry. There's a place that we said earlier, pruning time, okay? Uh, <clears throat> then there, there, so we are, our patient will be needed, but God promises in James 5, 7, it will come. We will learn lessons in affliction and trial. Don't be tired. Don't be weary in well-doing. Why? Because in due season, we shall reap if we want, faint not. Okay, now <clears throat> again, let's look at it again. So we see this matter of establishing ourselves in the word, make much of the word, make much in prayer, make much of the word. Next slide. And then it tells us the weed, the leaf also shall not wither. All right, our life, beauty. It's a protective beauty, but also protective qualities of life. Give us vigor. All right, go from strength to strength. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. All right, and security, enduring quality, freshness of heart. God gave us what we call a uh, uh, fire in the bones again. Freshness of experience, growing from one experience to another. Life progression in love, faith, and hope. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. You see, so there's vitality in there. You know, a lot of Christians are bored, tired looking so why? Because they have not made prayer. They have not established God's word in the center of their lives. Okay, then now, this tells us next now, uh, <clears throat> the next success. Look at that. Okay. Uh, and whatsoever he does, he shall prosper. 
God is in the process of it. With Joseph, for example, Genesis 39, 3, the Bible tells us that people could see the Lord was with him. So when we put God's word in the center of our life, obey, keep it, people will recognize that God will be with us. God's grace will be upon us and they will give us grace. Our riches to Abraham, for example, Proverbs 10, 22, God does give us riches, but without sorrow. But they have even Christian, you know, they have riches, but they have sorrow. Because of so many uh, ways of doing it that was wrong. But we have our riches, and God makes us rich without sorrow. Benefits of adversity. Uh, just when you think about, you know, the prosperity, gospel, where it's all, you say, oh, B looks good. You know? But listen, there is also benefits of uh, adversity. The Bible says God disciplines us. So that what? We will produce a peaceful fruit of righteousness. Right thought? Right eyes, seeing, right hearing, right words, right behavior, right heart, mind. And he gave us peace, shalom. Shalom means the body and the soul and the spirit becoming one. Many times, you know, our mind and our, our body and uh, we have aches and pain and depression and so because we don't have shalom, we don't have peace. The mind and the soul and the body is not one. The benefits, God discipline us, bring things about there's also soul prosperity. The trial of our faith, Peter said. Because faith being faith will be tested. So this is what faith is all about. That is much precious than gold, and it will be tried by fire, found unto the praise and the honor and the glory of Jesus Christ. That when we suffer with him, the appearing of Jesus Christ, we will reign with him. When we suffer with him, we will be glorified with him. Amen? When Jesus come again. So my friend, there is so prosperity. Now, the next thing now is that we need to establish is to establish what we call witness. Next. The prayer and the uh, word of God, then the witness. Now, let's see what it says there. Uh, look at the verses. And from you sounded out the word of the Lord sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, your faith to God's word is spread abroad, so we need not to speak anything. Next, for they themselves show to us what men of entering in we had unto you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who deliver, who deliver us from the wrath to come. Next, uh, look at that. We see now, the heralded by their example. By their what? Example. The, the, word, is, uh, <clears throat> the word says down there, uh, that you were, you were example to all that believe. The word example means this now, a mark left by a blow. You know, when you, you, when you use a hammer and blow, hit something, there's a mark left there. So they left a mark. Model, yes, but they left a mark by a blow. Left a mark of what believers and what a church should be. So other people were patterning after them. So let your light shine. Your light and my light shine. Uh, people may see the good works and they glorify the Father which is in heaven. Next, the word is sounded. Next slide. Sounded. And from you sounded out the word of the Lord. So not only the labor of love, but also sounded up. The word has to do with roaring thunder, loud and unmistakable. And uh, <clears throat> from, uh, <clears throat> from uh, uh, the center to others. The message uh, Impact their lives, change their lives. But the faith went up. It, there was an illustration, yes, of the word of God. Uh, <clears throat> the places of influence was in Macedonia, Eka, and into every place. And other people were telling Paul about it. All right? 
And uh, <clears throat> what a what a great joy it is. Uh, their life will change. They turn from uh, uh, they turn to God from the idols, and then uh, uh, drunkard, dishonors, dishonesty, drunkenness, impurity, contention, division. All this were left behind, and we will see later on uh, in chapter four where Paul begin to exalt them more and more for separation and for sanctification. Next, they heard it. They witnessed it by their expectation. What is their expectation? They turned to God from the idols. And the, the tense of the verb means they turned, as is the decisive action, to the living God. All right? And now, the word order is important. He didn't say from idols to God because that will be reformation by works. But they turn to God. And then when they turn to God, they will leave the idols. All right, isn't that, isn't that wonderful? I remember uh, one uh, 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 person that uh, I had the privilege to uh, uh, talk to. And, uh, and by faith, he turned to, to God. And then, uh, and then he said to me, after that, he says, are you coming to my house, which is about two hours drive away, and take away all my idols? So turn it to God. Repentance and faith in God first. And then from idols. All right. So the basic problem is that we have a sun problem or a sin problem. All right. So we need to trust in the sun. Okay. And sometimes we're just talking about sin and sin, sin all the time. But if we lead people to the Lord and enter into the beauty of His holiness and the holiness of beauty, to worship Him and love Him, all this sin, all these idols will fall away by the grace of God. Next, they held Him by their expectation of service. The word there, he says they saved to be serving, slaving to the Lord. And the tense of the verb is a very interesting uh, tense of the verb. Uh, <clears throat> it means that uh, to serve the living and true God, or to be serving, slaving to the Lord. All right? Continuing serving, not fit and start. It's the attitude in the life of <clears throat> serving. So, Question is, what idols are you serving? Keep yourself away from idols. And now, uh, next, they were expecting. They witness, they love the Lord, and they witness the word of the Lord by expecting His coming. They were expecting the rapture in their lifetime. Live the life expecting that any moment Jesus will come. The Bible said, Lord Jesus, come quickly. He didn't say, Lord Jesus, come soon. Soon means, well, we don't know. But come quickly, imminent, anytime. The tense of the verb means, wait up. Watch it constantly for the one they love. So Paul exalting Christ, his son, the divine begotten son from heaven. He's going to come from heaven. He came from heaven. Die for our sins on the cross. That was his divine origin, came from heaven. Die for our sins on the cross, rose up again from the dead, and went into heaven, and is coming from heaven. And so praise God in them. He was raised from the dead. There was assurance given to us that he's coming again to judge. His name is called Jesus because he was he will save us from our sin. He will deliver us from the wrath to come. It has to do with that great what we call tribulation. And so we are encouraged in the Bible to labor till he comes. Faithful and wise. Anxiously awaiting, but all so laboring until he comes. So my friend, He's coming quickly. He's coming anytime. So what kind of heart do you and I ought to have? Next slide. So here's a challenge here. Challenge here. We need to teach, preach, witness, testify, reason, and evangelize. 
We need to go to highways and hedges and compel people to Jesus. We need to send and support missionary and, ma- and national missionary for the gospel. There will be sweet smelling sacrifice to the Lord when we pray and when we give. Now, next now, establishing witness. Why? And the benefit. Because my friend, God is in the soul saving business. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave Jesus Christ so that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, he came to seek and to save those that are lost. He came not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. So the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit himself, the Trinity, God is a soul-saving business. Next, next slide, my brother. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come unto you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. So nearest and dearest to God's heart is the salvation of souls. We are to make disciples. We are to make people like Jesus Christ. And Jesus loved people. Jesus died for people. And we are, if, if we are going to be disciples of Jesus Christ, we ought to love people and even to die for them by the grace of God. So the Father and the Son was one in communion and one in unity. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, but also one in mission. So saving business. Let me give you a little definition of what witness is all about. We will be spending uh, one whole, uh, uh, <clears throat> what we call a series on evangelism. But let me quickly go through this with you. Next slide, quickly. And what is this? Keep this in mind. Okay? What is witnessing? Witnessing. Winning soul is a lifelong process. Okay? We sow, we water, we reap. It's a lifelong process. It takes a whole life. It takes a, uh, my uh, dad and my mom some 30, 40 years and so on. And then uh, <coughs> my uh, uh, <coughs> so, and each one of us have uh, what we, it's a lifelong process. And as long as a person is alive, there is still hope in Jesus Christ. He's sharing the God of Jesus Christ. What is the good news? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus died. He was buried, rose up from the dead. Stay away. The good news of Jesus don't talk about your church and your program, this and that and so on, although that might be good in certain ways, but talk about Jesus, the good news of Jesus Christ, in the love of God, the good deeds. All right, Ephesians 2, 10 tells us that even before the world was uh, formed, we have been uh, uh, enabled by the Spirit of God. We are His workmanship created unto good works. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, God has not left us alone because the Spirit will go in us, with us, and for us, and He will do what needs to be done. And leaving the results to God. Leave it to God. Amen? You see, when people reject the gospel, they don't reject you. They reject God Himself. They reject the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and it might hurt you, but it hurts God more. It stings God. Think about it. When Jesus died for our sins on the cross, you know, he's running the risk, you know, that people may reject him. And people are still rejecting him. But thank God for the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. The work, God is going to work in heart. And now let's look at why we ought to witness. Why we ought to establish witness. Why? Because it's obedience to Christ. All right? Go. And preach the gospel to every creature. When we witness, we establish witness in our life, prayer, word, and witness, healthy living. We are to obey, it better than sacrifice. Watch out the sin of omission. Right? Number two, love for Christ. If you love me, keep my what? Commandments. Do the first work. Watch out for business and for envy. There are two things you know, that kind of uh, mess up our life. Number one, the cares of this world. So we get so many bees busy with the cares of the world, this and ends on the fourth, you know, trying to provide this and how much, you know, enough is enough. And then envy. We're trying to vindicate ourselves, rationalize ourselves, protect ourselves, 
defend ourselves. Why don't we leave it to God and then obey His commandments and do what God wants us to do? Then number three is following Jesus. Jesus, you know, uh, <clears throat> next slide, my brother. Following Jesus. <clears throat> when Jesus went, Nicodemus, it was uh, one of those uh, priests, women in the well, that really have five husbands, a big sinner, uh, the one possessed with demons and so on. Jesus said, follow me, I will make fishes of men. Fishes of men must do what? Fish. Sometimes we talk about, you know, fishing, fishing, but we never fish. We need to go. We need to think. We need to find where the fish are. The ones that are hungry, the ones that are biting, the ones that are in tension, in trouble, the ones that are in transition in their life. And uh, we pray even in the time of the war that is happening in Ukraine and Russia and so on, that God's people may find time and a reason and a purpose to witness. And I believe that God is going to send revival and so being saved. Number four, paying the gospel debt. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the white, <clears throat> to the unwise. All right? And we had a debt to pay. We owe it to others that uh, has uh, uh, witnessed to us, but we owe it to Jesus Christ who had died and paid for our sins on the cross. We owe it, we owe it to God, and we owe it to the person, or, uh, to love them, to care for them, uh, to help them uh, to Jesus Christ. So let us occupy. Occupy. Next, living a wise life. Number five. You want to be wise? Next uh, slide now. You want to learn what it is to so live for eternity? You want to shine like a star uh, in the, in the, <clears throat> unto righteousness? Well, the Bible says, He that wins so is wise. So safe will be our glory and our joy. For Paul says, you are our glory and joy. That's so what You see, souls live forever. So when we uh, bring souls to Jesus Christ, they live forever. And we have rewards forever. Then freedom from the blood of all men. See that? Tells us this now. Uh, X is now. He said, listen, if we don't warn the wicked and they die, then we have blood in our hands. So if there are people that do not know the Jesus Christ and we're not telling the gospel, then we are what we call guilty uh, <coughs> of their, uh, uh, their, what we call, uh, the, we have blood in our hands. So or it's like, it's like when, when people are in, in the fire and then we know there are people uh, in, in the building, we ought to be shouting fire. We ought to be doing all that we can you know, to get the people out. If we don't do it, then we are guilty of the person's life. And may we go forth, as the scripture rank, we remind us, he that goeth forth and weepeth with tears in our eyes shall come forth rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. Next, let's look at now briefly through the instrument of witness. Instrument of witness. First of all, there is a gospel. It's like the seed cast out. The gospel is what? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stick to it. And the gospel is what? Power of God unto salvation. The word power is the dunamis, the dynamite of God <clears throat> that will break away, all right, <clears throat> into our lives. They'll break away the hardness of our heart, the evil of our heart, uh, the religious of all heart, even like Paul, who was a religious leader. Break it, dynamite it. And we are born again, not only by the Spirit of God, we are born again by the Word of God. The Spirit of God using the Word of God, convicting us, and the seed comes into our life and begin to grow in our hearts and our life. Number two, the human instrument. My friend, God can save. The gospel has been given, but you and I are the carriers. We are ambassadors of Christ. Amen? What does the ambassador do? The ambassador talks about their country. We talk about Jesus Christ. And so we pray to with people 
We pray for people. We talk to people. We care for people. We say, be ye reconciled to God. Amen. Okay. And then what? We are co-laborers with one another and with God. So we are not alone. Laborers together with God. You and I labor together. You see, witnessing is just not one-off thing. It's a lifelong thing. It's not just you, but God bring people across a pathway. You know, my children are in the States, grandchildren. Every day I say, Lord, you bring people across their life ways, bless their life, protect them, you know, that kind of thing, you know, provide for them. Amen? So we are laborers together. Together is a community, but also with God himself. He is the one. Uh, <clears throat> that is the one <clears throat> that uh, uh, we belong to him. We are God's husbandry. We are God's garden. We are God's building together. All right. Next, the real worker, number three, is the Holy Spirit. The real soul winner is the Holy Spirit. He will reprove. He will convict. He will convert. And he, we are born again by the Spirit of God. And the gospel is in his power. The gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. So we need to trust that's why we need to establish prayer in our life. We need to trust in His Word. We need to preach His Word. We need to use His Word. And then we need to trust in the Holy Spirit because in our witness, He will be the one that was saved. Okay, next now. And uh, <clears throat> let me give you some practical things right here so you think and pray along with me, okay? Now, <clears throat> this year, have faith in God. Now, <clears throat> you can kind of... Uh, Go through this, all right? And say to the Lord, I will prepare my life for God to work in and through me. Allow the Spirit of God to control me with His love and power. I will ask God daily to give me faith to believe and the heart thirst for Him and for souls through the reading of His Word and prayer. Amen. I will pray daily for God to impress upon my heart some soul or some family for this year. Now, number three is important. I'm praying every day on this. Impressed by my heart, some soul, I can start praying, some family, and can start uh, thinking about how to care and share. Amen. How to witness. Next now. And then I'll pray. All right. <clears throat> when God brings people across my mind, I say, I'll pray for them morning and night. Anytime God helps me to recall, I will build relationship and do good work. I will share present blessing and testimony. I will give track, books, tapes, or music and sermon. I extend invitation to Harvest Vehicle when they're gospel meeting, when you have what you call a, a, a <clears throat> anniversary and Christmas, you know, and so on, birthdays, present the gospel for positive response, invite to small groups and church for community and assimilation to encourage baptism, membership, and ministry. And then name of the person and family. You write it down. And say 2022 by the grace of God, at least one soul, at least one family for Jesus. Amen. Can you establish that by the grace of God? Then let's this one. Now persuade him with the gospel. Some of us may want to think about it. Uh, next one. I call this a Romans road. Okay? This is going. And then, <clears throat> in fact, <clears throat> you said, How do I tell the gospel? Just think about this Romans road. All the sin. The wages of sin is death. Christ died for us. Romans 5.8. The Bible says, confess and believe in Jesus Christ. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. And then Romans 10.13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Amen. So if the person wants to, uh, you can just go to it. You know, people say, so, okay, what do you Christians believe in? Well, can I share with you what Christians believe in? Well, we believe, first of all, we all are sinners. We come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. And God commanded his love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. And if we confess our sin and believe that Jesus rose up from the dead, then we will be saved. 
And when we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved. That's what we believe in. Amen? Just preach the gospel. All right? And we, what you want to realize that you need the Lord Jesus Christ, here's another one that you need to think of. And uh, another, another way I work at it, when I go forth and just witness another, another one. Number two. Uh, next slide, brother. Very simple one. And I call it the book of sin. Okay? You uh, kind of uh, uh, hold your, your, your left hand. You say, let my left hand represent me and my right hand represent Jesus Christ. So you hold up a book with your left hand and you said, you know, this uh, book uh, represent my shortcoming and my sin. Uh, <clears throat> and God loves me and he hates my sin and must punish, um, punish them. So you look up, uh, point to the book. But because of great love, God sent his son, uh, Jesus Christ, and you lift up your right hand parallel to the left. And the Bible said, all we like sheep have gone astray. Uh, we have turned everyone to our own way, but the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. As you said, the word lay on him, you transfer the book of sin from the left hand to the right hand and leave it there. So when Jesus died on the cross, you said, God lay on him, on him all my sin and guilt. Jesus was buried and our sins were buried with him. And then he rose up again from the dead. And then we have the life with him. And now we can uh, come because Jesus is alive and we can come and trust and believe in Jesus Christ. That is what we call uh, the good news of Jesus Christ for you and for me. Amen. Call it the book of sin. All right. Very simple presentation of God's word. Amen. And, uh, and I, I, I've used it with uh, somebody that was what we call a, uh, uh, and, uh, 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 professional doctor and by simple faith he trusted and believed in Jesus Christ next slide now okay just quickly go through it so that you will just realize the process okay take it back we will be doing this again and so on first of all uh, friendship we need to win the loss uh to, uh, the, uh, to the loss in the community. Then we need to build the believer, the congregation. Okay? And if we're going to win the loss, we must know our fish, we must think like the fish, we must know a uh, goal where the fish are biting, we must find the fish that are hungry, we must use as many hooks as possible, and then we must fish for the kind of fish I can best catch. Some of us can witness to children, some to young people, some to adult, some in a hospital, some among divorced people, uh, <clears throat> you know, the various kind of people God will impress upon your heart and your life to reach. Next. Okay. Next uh, slide, my brother. So then you equip, uh, you mentor, and you multiply leaders. Take this charge and look through it. We don't have time to go through it, but we will visit this again as we go along. Next now. And uh, next slide, brother. And we are looking at some simple meditation. We have uh, <clears throat> one, uh, <clears throat> one uh, man that work among cancer patients. All right, he himself had cancer. And he had what we call five Ps. We're teaching you how to meditate God's word, five Ps. First of all, pause. You read it and you pause. And you say, what is God saying to me? My life, my needs, my direction. Ponder. What is God saying about himself? Okay? And pray. What is my desire? Yes. Now, these five Ps. Okay, the next slide now. Uh, we are going to be ending in a minute, all right? Okay, now let's take one verse. We're going to meditate and we're going to chew on it, all right? Take one verse. God is our refuge and strength. My, my favorite. A very present help in trouble. Refuge, we can hide. We're hiding God first. He's our hiding place, strength. We want to give us strength to go out. Very present help in trouble. God is a very present God. He's ever present, all present, now present with you and with me. 
Okay, so pause. So we pause first and we look at it and say, what is God saying to me? Ah, and he's saying, I can trust God in time of trouble. All right, so you ask yourself, what is God saying to me? I can trust God in time of trouble. What, is, what do I ponder? What is God saying about himself? Ah, what is he saying about himself? He's saying, hey, I'm your refuge and strength. I can protect you and I can strengthen you. So I pray. I pray, what is my desire? Lord, you have assured me. I will trust you. Okay? You have said you are my refuge and strength. Lord, I will trust you. So what am I grateful for? Lord, thank you. Your truth endure forever. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness. You'll be faithful to your word. You will help me in time of trouble. So what is practice? So what is one practice? What is my response to God? I trust you as I go for a medical checkup. Ah, you know how medical checkup is, especially when you are kind of a little old, or you are kind of worried, uh, uh, you have some serious problem. Uh, <clears throat> so you uh, <clears throat> kind of say, uh, Lord, here's my response. I will trust you as I go for medical checkup. So you chew, you take a verse or maybe a portion, all right? Uh, God is my refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. You pause it, what is God saying to me? And you ponder it, what is God saying about himself? Then what is my desire? All right, Lord, I want to trust in you. What am I grateful? Thank you, Lord. I pray. I thank you now. Thank you. And Lord, here is a problem I have. I will trust you very specifically. If I go for medical checkup. Next now. Okay, next. Now, here's your assignment. Go through this 5P. You take their, they are, assignment one has three things there. All right? All right, so you take Psalm 23, 4. Time we've got fear. So you have fear. Okay? And time we've got, you take Psalm 139, 14, acceptance. You take that and you chew it, okay? Uh, time we've got faith, Proverbs 3, 5, 8. You take that verses and you pause, you ponder, you pray, you praise, and you practice. Okay, so assignment one has three things in there. So we come together, let's look at it together. Those who are taking for credit, please let your facilitator have your answer. Now assignment number two. Uh, next now. Okay. Assignment number two. Now what three lessons have I learned from the studies? So you think about three lessons. What will be one prayer I have? Okay, afterwards, we're going to have time to share. All right? You just have one lesson. You learn from it. And if you have prayer, Please let us know. Next. Okay. Next now. So here's my uh, email address. For some of you that uh, want to write to me personally and you have email, go singfong at hotmail.com. And if you have uh, an application called WhatsApp, you put plus 65 9820773. There's a website, Faith at Work Fellowship ORG. Then you give us what we are doing and many other training materials and also sermons and uh, many things that uh, we work in. So that if you uh, need to talk to us, uh, just write to us in all these things if you need any help. Now, Father, we are so thankful that you have not left us alone. You have given to us uh, the privilege of prayer. And you've given us your Holy Spirit to pray for us, to pray in and through us, to enable us to pray rightly, Lord. Establish prayer in our heart to thy Spirit. Thank you for that word, which is God's breath. It's God's living word that's able to give us life, not just 
only for our conversion, but every day in our life, abundant life in Christ Jesus, healthy life, fruitful life, a life that souls may be brought to Jesus Christ. And then, oh Lord, you enable us to be a faithful witness of yours, Lord. That every day in our life, we grow to be like Jesus, to love you, to have faith in you, to hope for the coming of Jesus Christ, to know that whatever we do, O oh Lord, in Jesus Christ, you will prosper whatever our hands will do, dear Lord. And even in this matter of living a life for eternity, serving God and serving people and living for eternity, so that you will say to us one day, well done, the good and faithful servant. Bless each one of us, O oh Lord, that have been in the training. And bless those, our Heavenly Father, that will get the audio and uh, the video and so on, Lord. May you bless their hearts and their life. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And now it's the time for you to share your blessing. Share one lesson you learned from me. And then if you have a prayer, share a prayer.